Uh, this is uh, Paul Michael Davis on MCTV, and I'm here for another uh, another edition of the episode of uh, the Military Life, where we go around to local uh, veterans of uh, the military and um, hear their story. Uh, we believe that that, that if, you, if you don't learn from your past, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to uh, repeat it. How? Well, I'll let Gene tell the story. Gene, how you doing? Good, good, Paul. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, so you um, have been around these parts for a while now, haven't you? Been one a while. Been here in Paola since 54. And just so everybody knows, which I'm sure you already know, <laughs> uh, Gene, yeah, he, he, brought, he brought cable to Paola. To Paola. Oh, so what I mean. <laughs> so, so. Spring Hill. Uh, I guess. Willisburg. I, 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 I guess I'm in a debt of, uh, debt of gratitude because I wouldn't be here with the MCTV. You wouldn't be watching MCTV right now if it weren't for this man. So this is a. So now, Gina, so you've been here for a while. Yes. Um, since 54. Now, right? tell the viewers about. Um, how you got into the military? Actually, what what, uh, what branch you were? I mean, the whole bit. The good. whole bit. Okay. Well, I back in 1948, there was such a thing as the Berlin Airlift. Now, a few of us older folks will understand what that was, no. but it was actually uh, when the Russians cut off our part of Berlin, the uh, uh, President Truman sent every all their supplies into the, the our part of Berlin that was cut off by airplane mm -hmm. and that was they come in one plane right after another. And that was Harry S. Truman, right? Yeah, okay. Harry S. Truman. Harry S. Truman. And uh, and so that went on and it, at the time they was a little short of people uh, after World War II, where they dis, uh, discharged everybody, it was a little short of manpower, so they had to start up the draft again. Mm -hmm. So I barely missed the draft in World War II, so I was right at the top of the <laughs> list. Right at the here at the very first pick. Yeah, in uh, Chilton Cully here in Paola. A few of you old timers will remember Chilton. And uh, he was on the draft board, and, and I got my notice from him that, that uh, uh, I would be reporting as a service. So I decided, well, I believe I'll just go to the Air Force. I believe I'd rather be in the Air Force. So I, I enlisted in the Air Force. Now, why did you choose the Air Force? Well, I just thought it would, you know, I thought I might like to fly an airplane a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> thought I might like to fly an airplane, do some flying. But anyway, uh, when I went in, I uh, went up to Topeka and then went down to San Antonio, Lackland Air Force Base for my basic training. In fact, they still do basic training there for people that goes in the Air Force. And after that, my, I went to uh, what they call radio operator school, which was learning Morse code and, and uh, how to copy it on a typewriter and to uh, pass messages. At that time, the military, the way they communicated was over the air by Morse code uh, using radio. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was learning. And uh, I went to, after basic training, went to uh, Scottfield, Illinois, and uh, started my training for that. And about three-fourths of the way through radio school, while the school was moved to Biloxi, Mississippi. So I was moved to, uh, Biloxi and uh, to finish up my uh, schooling on the radio and that was quite an experience. So after that why they took a couple of guys out of our outfit. It was me and a guy from uh, Leavenworth mm -hmm. the name of Jim Smith and uh, and they pulled us out of our out of the class and said, you're going to Brooks Field back in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, now, how, how vivid are the memories? Oh, I mean, well, pretty good. I, good. I see Jim quite often, and uh, uh, we have a reunion every year of our really? old outfit that was overseas there. <laughs> And Jim was over there with us, and, and uh, we have a good, good relationship, mm -hmm. and have had all through the years. And he's been down here a few times, and I've been up there, and, and it, it's been a good rela uh, relationship that you remember. Mm -hmm. And so, um, mm. after we went to Brooks Field, why, um, it was spring training was on, so I thought I wanted to see if I could play baseball down there. I thought I was a big time baseball player. No. I found out it wasn't quite as good as I thought it was, but anyway, <laughs> I, I went to play baseball. And, and anyway, the major that was uh, running the baseball team, he thought I was good enough that I had to stay there an extra two months <laughs> when our when our outfit left uh, <laughs> San Antonio for for uh, for Korea, the season, so, season's over, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I uh, uh, played baseball that summer, and then, and at the time, why I uh, I uh, was kind of an instructor at the school I had mm -hmm. there. And the purpose of the school was we were learning some extra characters in the, the in Morse code that we didn't use, but we found out later that the, where they were used was the Russians and the Chinese used them. Mm -hmm. So we had to learn uh, some of their. Uh, Oh, a few extra. I remember uh, one uh, signal was we'd hit the dollar sign, another signal was we'd hit a dash, and another signal was a colon. And, uh, well, man, well, man, well, because we didn't, we didn't have those characters on our typewriter, uh -huh. see, so when they come over, we'd have to hit the dollar sign or, or a colon or something uh -huh. to uh, you know, that, to show that in the message. So how did you understand, I mean, did you learn uh, Japanese or? No, we, we uh, it, it was international or? Morse code. Okay, okay. All the characters were the same, plus a few extra. So basically just like, like stenography, I mean, how you. Yeah, well, we copied all this on a typewriter, mm -hmm. see, and I, I just happened to take typing when I was a senior in high school, and it was really a big help because <laughs> I knew the keyboard, and and of course in those days, yeah, it was all manual typewriter. It wasn't no electric or nothing. You had to push the thing by, you know. <laughs> and we we came very efficient at it. Yeah, and. Uh, so we went to that schooling and learned those extra characters and they say, well now, everything was secretive. You say, well, you can't talk about what you're doing or talk to you. Well, well uh, now everybody knows we've done those kind of things and so I'm not worried about it now. But back in those days, I'd have really been worried about it. <laughs> I wouldn't have said a thing, you know, of course my family or nobody knew what was going uh -huh. on. So in order to do this secret work, well, you had to have pass an FBI uh, uh, test or examination. Mm -hmm. So uh, so how hard was it to, to, to keep that all all bottled up? Well, it, it, it was, it was, you know, you just knew better than to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, to get my clearance to do this kind of work, they uh, two FBI agents ended up over at Lewisburg, and my God, and everybody was in a tither of what the hell is that Murray kid doing? <laughs> <laughs> they were running up and down, what did you work here? Do you know this kid? Uh -huh. They went over to school and checked all my records. They'd done everything. So they come back, so I got uh, my clearance to 
do the work, and mm -hmm. so uh, uh, I was cleared to go ahead and and work on this stuff. So uh, along then that fall, after the baseball season, why well, they needed a three-man crew to go to Nome, Alaska to uh, do some <clears throat> intercept work up there. So intercept, we, so intercept work, I mean, that's, that's, that's well, fine. That intercept work was, we were up, sent up there to copy the Russians. They mm -hmm. were just, Nome is kind of out on uh, where the Aleutians are. Uh -huh. and, and as, what's her name up there, it says you can see Alaska, or you can see Russia over there. <laughs> and, uh, and so. Uh, so So, so, so let's let's see. Let's get it straight now. So, you were an international spy. You, you, you were James Bond for the America. <laughs> well, sort of. Yeah, 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 yeah. international spy. Yeah, so right. we went up there, and, <laughs> and uh, so we uh, spent about six weeks up there, and we we searched every radio band there was, day and night, and everything else. And, uh, I said that that was. And it Forever. was kind of interesting, and we had to log all of it and keep track of it. So we come back, and uh, they said, okay, well, we can send a detachment up there to start doing all this work on these frequencies and so on. Mm -hmm. So then they s sent me to Japan, and uh, I went over to Japan on the... Uh, um, uh, the flying flying tiger airlines. <laughs> well, actually, I went from from uh, San Francisco to Hawaii, Hawaii and Honolulu on the flying tiger airlines, <laughs> and uh, there was about eight of us on this pretty good side. Well, it was like a DC four. Mm -hmm. It was a I'm Pretty mad. good size yeah. airplane, but there was only eight of us on there, and we we thought it was fun. Uh -huh. And so we get to Hawaii, and then when we go on the next leg over to Tokyo, we went by a military plane. Well, at that time, there was what yeah. they had. Real quick, Gene, sorry, just so everybody knows, hey, we're talking about airplanes. <laughs> not, not jets. No, they're uh, prop the, planes. The prop, so the propellers uh, <laughs> yeah, going right. all the way to Japan. That's right. That's, that's, so, that's we, a haul. so we so uh, we uh, left Hawaii in what they called at that time a flying box car. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the nomenclature was it was a C eighty two or a C two. Uh, I'm not sure which one it was, but it was a flying box. I had two big Pratt Whitney engines on it, and uh, you know, and kind of a box car looking thing. And so uh, there was about eight or ten of us on there, and 
we were on the, in those jump seats. They didn't have regular seats, you know. They just had regular seats, and they lined us all up before we got on the plane. And, and you put on a a uh, parachute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not too encouraging when they, when they line you up out there and tell you if you have to jump out of that plane, why you got to do this. And, and roll. Man, if your chute don't open while you hit this emergency chute. <laughs> and so, uh, but anyway, we get on the plane and, and uh, we take off. And we go over, and it's all ocean for hour after hour after hour. <laughs> and pretty soon, that thing rattly banged and was loud, you know. And everybody was sitting there, and pretty soon they started looking out the windows, and all water. They didn't see nothing. And pretty soon, somebody <laughs> says, There it is! It has a bad <laughs> And everybody ran over to the one, and the captain he stuck his head out of the place. Get back in your seats! You said you, you're going to dump the plane over you know? And so we got back in our seats, and here they land on this little island. It was no bigger than a pin drop in that big ocean, and it's about a wake wake island. And about all was there was a runway. It was about a quarter mile wide and about two miles long. I, I, for the life of me, yet I, I still don't know how in the world we ever found that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so back back then, they didn't have like the the, the radars. Well, the, we had some yeah. stuff, but not not like they do today. Oh <laughs> but anyway. So, uh, thank so God kids, for guys that knew what they were doing. So, what, but, uh, what was your job doing uh, in Korea? Well, when I got to, uh, well, I actually first got to Japan, and so I had a little bit more schooling, and uh, that was a, a place of Masawa. It was up by Tokyo, and. Uh, they said, well, this is what you're going to be doing. So we kind of took a notion, took a look, and it was copying the, uh, Korean, Chinese, mm -hmm. and Russian code. Well, they couldn't get it real good at, 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 around there, so they had a detachment in the lower island of J Japan, which was Kyushu, and uh, no one we, God bless you. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and it was uh, a Shia Air Force base base on and, Kyushu. And that's on that's in Korea. No, that was in uh, Japan. Okay, that was okay. still in Japan. Okay. So, actually, I was headquartered out of there. Mm -hmm. So when I got down there, we had a uh, 24-hour shift on this. Uh, um, radio, we were copying these mm -hmm. signals and we were watching these particular frequencies 24 hours a day and copying everything off of them. And uh, um, so we were, and it was a lot of it was kind of schooling because they were just starting, there's only three or four on a shift. And about that time, then the, the guy the the uh, uh, chief operator or the uh, trick chief he had to go back up to the base there at Tokyo so they come to me and they said Murray you're trick chief and I said oh yeah well good thank you <laughs> <laughs> and so I said so uh, uh, we uh, um, Started out with four or five guys on the shift. We had uh, linguist and uh, and code operators, and we were copying Koreans and whatever we could find out was going on over in Korea mm -hmm. and in China and in Russia too. And so uh, we had what they call a, a DF truck. 
Mm -hmm. There's DF meaning direction finding. So we would uh, locate a certain frequency or a certain station that was broadcasting. So, okay, we need to know where that station is. Mm -hmm. So we would shoot a bearing on it and we would it would get plotted on a map. Mm -hmm. and we had one over in, in Okinawa. They'd also shoot a bearing on it. We had one in Tokyo, and they'd get a bearing on them. We'd coordinate all these. They'd put it on a map, and then they'd keep shooting it, and they'd narrow that down at the point, and then they'd send a, a, a reconnaissance plane over or something and mm -hmm. locate what they were looking for, and then they'd send the B-29s over and wipe them off. <laughs> yeah. and, so, uh, so this was post... Uh, Post a uh, nuclear bomb. Well, post, post, post. we had a nuclear bomb at that time. This was after I yeah. went. No, this is after this is after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, I went so to I, Nagasaki on my way down to this. So what, what was that Japan. like? Is is nothing. It's terrible. It, yeah. it just you could see they were just probably a five mile area that was just flat. Once in a while you'd see a chimney or stub of a tree trunk or yeah. probably five miles. Oh yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. It so was, what about outside of there? Well there was you know it's pretty the living conditions over there wasn't quite as good as what we had. It was different. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Nagasaki was really tore. But anyway, we was doing all this work, and then we had a detachment over in Korea. <coughs> and a few times I had to go over to Cor Korea, and we were coordinating all of these these. Uh, uh, bearings we'd shoot on these radio signals, you know, between all of our places so we could plot it on a map and know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So, and another interesting thing along about that time, we, um, the, uh, our crypto guys, the guys that were decoding the messages, mm -hmm. see all these messages were all in code groups or yeah. different things so our crypto guys would, would uh, and they were secretive enough that they kept them away from us and there was a wall between and the only thing we had was a slit in the wall and when we'd copy our message we'd stick it through that slit the crypto guy was on the <laughs> other side and we didn't even sleep or stay in the same tent with them or anything really because they were just, uh, you know, they didn't all that secretive stuff. And so um, they would decode the messages and so on. 
One interesting thing we used to do all the time, I always kind of got a kick out of it. Chinese had a weather station that they, and I think our Navy has the same thing, that they put out the weather for the whole area all mm -hmm. the time. So we constantly had somebody monitoring that radio station and we'd copy all of their radio station, we'd slip it over to the crypto guy mm -hmm. and they'd decode it and we'd put out a weather report for China then. <laughs> and we'd, uh, not necessarily China, but the river up yeah. there on North Korea, the Yangtze or something, I forget mm -hmm. the name of it, but it, the river uh, we'd, we'd send our F-86s up there to kind of say, don't you come over here, and they'd send those MiG-15s up there, don't you come over here, really? you know, that, and that's, uh, and we'd, uh, you know, uh, had, to, had to let them know we yeah. were over here if you guys get a little to, to stay, tough, stay, well, stay, stay back, you get just away. Stay so. over there. <laughs> 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 but uh, anyway, the Chinese got in the thing anyway, but uh, our ground troops really worked them over, I'm telling you, they worked them over. <laughs> so, so tell me about it, man, it's probably jumping forward a little bit, but the 87 parallel. Uh, you mean uh, across? The, the, the DMV. The oh, yeah. <coughs> well, you know, they... Uh, and I'm sorry for people that know the They DMV, come down, DMV we push them back, then they come back, and uh, uh, tell, tell the viewers uh, real quick. A, uh, tell, tell the viewers real quick what DMV stands for. Demilitarized Zone. Yeah, the DMZ. DMZ. Yeah, the DMZ. DMZ, DMZ, yeah, the DMZ. DMZ. Well, DMZ they decided on the 87 parallel that was a DMZ demilitarized demilitarized zone. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, that was uh, agreed finally after a long negotiating period. It was agreed that that uh, you know North Korea would be on the north side of it, and South Korea would be on mm -hmm. the south side. And I have to say that uh, when I would go over to Korea on those temporary TDY <coughs> temporary duty. Mm -hmm. Well, I always had to go through the city of Seoul, mm -hmm. and that town was way over a million people population, and you talk about tore up, it was tore up from one end to the other. Mm -hmm. Why is that? You Just couldn't, well, of a, the troops going through and back and through again, mm -hmm. and the artillery and the bombing and just complete devastation for well over a million people. There wasn't a building that didn't have the glass blown out of it or the roof blown off of it or leveled or it was terrible. And uh, war is terrible. Mm -hmm. I want to get that. It is really bad. War is really bad. Remember that. <laughs> so, um, so we. Uh, and what, 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 year, what year was this? That would have been uh, fifty. Well, I think it was fifty three. See, I got out in fifty two, mm -hmm. but I was over there in fifty one and fifty two, and uh, so uh, I was there when they were going back and forth and Ridgeway was so how was commanding. your transition back to the US to make me you transition got, got back, back here? Uh, well when we come in why everybody was I come back on a troop ship. Mm -hmm. The general Billy Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the name of the That's ship? the name of the ship. The General Billy Mitchell. General Billy Mitchell. And of course, we's all stacked in there almost like cordwood. <laughs> so, uh, so how many people are on it? Oh, I don't know, probably a couple thousand maybe. I don't know, something like that. But anyway, uh, uh, we were very fortunate. We come out of, I think it was Yokohama, and we come out of Yokohama Bay, which was kind of rough and choppy. And the Pacific Ocean just leveled off, and it was just 
flat as a pancake all the way to San Francisco. Really? And it was really a good cruise and, and you know, it, uh, it wasn't all those horrific uh, seasick stories. <laughs> so, so when you were over there, I mean, before that, when you were over in uh, Korea and Japan, did you have to deal with any uh, type of tsunamis or? No, I never like heard. Well, there was one time, I do remember real good, we were, of course, we, when I was in that lower island, Japan, we all we were in tents, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they told us one time, we said, get ready, there's a cyclone coming in, so we get all ready, there's certain things we had to do was pull the six bys in around the tents and mm -hmm. tie everything down and all this good story. So nothing happened. Just nice, calm evening. <laughs> so the next time they done it, while well, we done the same thing, went to all the trouble, mm -hmm. you know. Of, uh, and so the third time they done it, why they, uh, this was all over a period of probably a month or two. And, uh, but the third time they done it, we said, oh, heck, those guys don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do a darn thing. And we had a little bit of a day room, which was an old Japanese fire hanger. It's just a little bitty thing, kind of in the side of the hill, like. And we had a day room. We'd go down there. There was electric light in there, and we had... Uh, um, we could play cards or, or, and they had soda pop down there, and, really? and you could buy, buy it back in those days, you could buy cigarettes. And for and next thing. to nothing. <laughs> yeah, for, for, for ten a quarter, cent, a quarter. Ten cents a package. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Uh, we would go down there, and uh, I'm not sure they sold cigarettes there, though, but they, they did over at the PX. And uh, we were all in there playing cards, and a big puff of wind come in, and it blew the door open, and we knew that the weather bureau knew what they were talking about. <laughs> the whole head was blowing, and we took off. <laughs> and and the compound where we had our our radio equipment and the thing was the only safe place around so we all got in the compound there and he just ripped and shredded those tents uh, I've got a picture of someone one of just you know that when it, it and that canvas on those army tents was really stout stuff and uh, and it just ripped that stuff like you mm -hmm. rip an old sheet apart I bet. and uh, and I we had to, and 
Uh, a couple of us had to go after this DF truck, or direction finding yeah. truck, because we saw it in flashes of lightning. We could see a door had blew open out there, and we didn't want the equipment to get any wetter than it already was. So we took a, a truck out there and and uh, closed the door. And I kept seeing these things flying by, <laughs> and I and I didn't uh, realize what it was till the next day when the thing all calmed down. Mm -hmm. My it was a it was uh, sheets, tin sheets off of the hangar, a couple miles away. <laughs> really, <laughs> it's blowing away the hangar. And those still sheets go, oh boy, if it hit that old Jeep, why, okay, we'd have been in yeah. deep trouble. <laughs> so, okay, so you get back in uh, 52. Two, yeah. You get back in 52, go back to San Francisco. Yeah. You come straight back to Kansas? Straight back to Lewisburg? Or? Yeah, well, I come back, I got to leave and come so, back to Lewisburg, and then I went back to. How old were you when you went in? I was about, uh, what, about 18 or 19, probably 19. Uh, so you get back here, you get back to Lewisburg. Yeah. What did you do then? What, then you know, what, what, was oh, your, what was the response when you got back to the States? I mean, I know oh, San Francisco. It was, it was good. I have to tell you about coming into San Francisco. We, mm -hmm. had, we like I was saying, we come in on this troop ship and it, and we got it, actually we got in a day early because the water was so calm. And uh, and the uh, uh, and and when we were coming in, why well, everybody was excited and say, "Oh, we're going under the uh, the Golden Gate Bridge." Oh, we are, yeah. So everybody kept seeing. Well, let's go, and it wasn't nothing but fog. That's all you could see, fog. And you hear the boop, 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 boop. <laughs> you hear that, uh, that the, in the harbor there, you know, and you couldn't see uh -huh. anything. And this was so boats? pretty soon, yeah, we were on our ship. We were when we were going into the dock, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, somebody says, "There it is!" So up above the fog, uh, oh, probably. Uh, a quarter of the towers that hold the Golden Gate Bridge uh, you were, were as visible and we could see it and they come in and and uh, there was some kind of a we had a greeting out there I suppose it was from the, um, you know the recreation place from mm -hmm. the from the uh, uh, from San Francisco or there was, is it my, was it San Francisco or Oakland? But I, mm. anyway, it was, it was uh, there and, and we, you know, from there I go to Lisburg and, and, uh, Did you on, go by plane or by train? Uh, went by plane. Okay. And uh, I did travel by train a lot from Kansas City to San Antonio and back when I was in the, when I first. And then when I went overseas, I went from Kansas City to San Francisco on a train. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it was a great experience. So I don't know. I'd want to do it again, but yeah. <laughs> sure. But after I after I got back, well, I I used my experience in radio and and got a went to a radio school there in Kansas City, is Central Technical mm -hmm. Institute. It was the name of the school mm -hmm. then. Today it's DeFry University, but because they bought my old school out. Really? But, yeah. And so uh, real quick, um, so were you married or before you went? I got married when I was in Scottfield, Illinois. I, uh, on well, a weekend. <laughs> well, what year was that? Uh, what year was that? 
That would have been in 49 or 50. 49. Look at you. <laughs> so was she from Illinois? No, she was a Kansas City girl. Okay. Her dad had a, had a farm in Lewisburg, uh -huh. and that's how I met her. Thank you, Gene. <laughs> so, yeah. so tell me, tell me about the I mean, How did she? Uh, I guess how did she respond, or how did she handle you being away over there? She was very, very good. She wrote me letters, and I'd write her a letter. And she was very nice, and I, you know, was very, very. It worked out all right. It was. It wasn't easy for either one of us, but but it worked out all right. And when she, uh, uh, when I got back, well, then she, I had to go back down to San Antonio to mm -hmm. be mustered out, and I was down there about a month. And uh, somehow or another, she came home pregnant with twins. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, damn. So uh, they were born in, in uh, 53. <laughs> I get home 6 